This is my original Runcam 2 mount and as you can see it's had more than the occasional encounter with terra firma. I thought I'd 3D print myself another one. I'd already printed this GoPro mount before and that works really well. But I thought I'd just go on to Thingiverse and as per usual somebody would have made the entire thing that could be 3D printed. But I drew a blank. All I could find was the top part and this GoPro mount. So I was trying to think of a way of merging those two STL files together and doing a bit of googling I came across suggestions like Blender. Now I don't know if you've ever attempted to use Blender. I have on a couple of occasions and after hours of frustration had to go and lie down in a darkened room. Another suggestion was Mesh Mixer, uh, which I've used before as well, but I thought that was way overkill for just joining two things together. I happened to have open at the time Tinkercad, and just out of amusement more than anything, pulled the two files into there, and surprisingly was able to join them together. And there is the result. In the next part of the video, I'll show you how I managed that. Here we can see the first object on Thingiverse, which is the holder itself for the run cam. All that it's missing is the GoPro part in the middle, which is available on this Thingiverse item. Let's now import those both into Tinkercad and merge them together. Clearly what we have to do is to rotate one of the objects through 90 degrees. So that is now sitting in the correct location, but obviously it's upside down. Having rotated it through 180 degrees, we now have to move it down. And now it's sitting flush on the floor of the mount. Clearly the next thing we have to do is to combine the two objects together. Which we do with the group function. And now we have a single object. I'm not done modifying it yet. What I'd like is a hole 14 millimeters from this edge in sufficient to pass an SMA connector through. For that we're going to need a cylinder and that will need to be four millimeters by four. The height of it is not important at this time. Rotating it through 90 degrees. To more easily visualize and move the cylinder I've just converted it to a solid. So note now that it's 29 millimeters from the edge of the circle there, and I need it 29 to the center. So I've got to move the object two millimeters to the left. And now I need to move it to within one millimeter of the top. In Tinkercad, we can't rotate the ruler. It's always in this plane here. So we are going to have to rotate the object itself. Before we do that, we need to group it. Otherwise, only one thing will move. Select the objects and group them. We can now rotate it again through 90 degrees. I need to ungroup the object to be able to move the hole. We can see by the two millimeters here that it is currently two millimeters from the top of the box to the top of the hole and I want that to be only one millimeter. So let's move that over. We can now group everything finally. What I should have done before grouping it was to change this back to a hole. To be able to move it easily, I changed it into a solid, but it now needs to be the hole there. And 
the final grouping we have our our hole. Now we simply need to export it as an STL for our slicing software. Let's go now to the slicing software and see how it looks. This slicing software is quite new and probably not familiar to many people. I thought I'd give it a try for this exercise. It's by Craftware and I'll leave a link in the description. Let's import our object. There we can see it in all its glory. What we want to do clearly is to provide some support material because it's not going to print very well hanging in free space. So let's go over to the support tab. Just for grins, let's auto generate the support and see what it comes up with. Uh, clearly that should, uh, that should do the job. And it's even popped a little piece in our hole at the back there. I think we'll just try and print it like that and see how it turns out. If we're happy with that selection, we can now go ahead and slice it. And there's a whole, a whole raft of uh, options here. Just checking that everything is correct. I'd set this up already for a different project, so it's set to my 3D printer already. Let's just go ahead and slice it. Got the statistics up here, and again we can see what the resultant tool paths are going to be. Let's go ahead and save the g-code. Time to go print. Here we can see the resultant print with the support material still in, in place. Looks like a nice solid job and the camera fits in there perfectly, so that's good. Let's see how easy or not it is to remove this support material. Once you've started, it seems to be easier to get into it. Maybe try some side cutters. Here we can see that the mount in the middle has been relieved by these holes here, so there's less danger of, of breaking those off. Perhaps an idea would be to clean this up, maybe using uh, an abrasive wheel on the Dremel. I'll go and try that. I'm very pleased with the end result after using a Dremel on the bottom and a quick clean up with a, with a file. Quite respectable and obviously this is the, the surface that you'll see normally anyway. Functional if not aesthetically pleasing. Got the hole in the back there. Camera fits perfectly. And this is going to go on my Bixler glider, like so. Now you can see what the hole in the back was for to pass this FPV transmitter antenna through. I'm going to be able to take some really nice footage with this setup, I think.